Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, Crazy Dave here. Uh, this is Anubis, my dog, one of many Siberian Huskies. Today we're going to talk about some uh, common Android rooting problems. I consistently get post after post on these uh, little forums underneath my videos about questions and this and that and the other regarding rooting. And generally it's duplicate questions. People run into the same issues. So I've been kind of collecting them up and wanted to talk about them here to helpfully, hopefully uh, make it a little easier of a process. Uh, first off, rooting may brick your phone. So heads up on that. Uh, make it use, unusable ever again. Uh, complete everything at your own risk. Uh, you may void your warranties, that kind of thing. The uh, first topic I want to cover is Odin. Odin basically allows a person to flash any software to their phone that they need from their computer to the phone itself. The software of Odin is pretty custom. It runs on Windows. Um, you have to have another version uh, called Hymdale for uh, running on Mac and that's a whole other story. We're going to focus on Windows today because that's the most common. Um, I use an Apple to do the same thing but I run Windows on it for that purpose. Uh, from there uh, you have versions that have been coming out over time and the issue that people run into most common with these versions is that you have like version 1.3 for example or version 1.8 the features and stuff on them change a little bit but what really affects people is, is that some ROMs some of the files that you're trying to flash to your phone won't work on some versions of Odin and it's really hard to tell sometimes if that's the problem Generally, in most of the forums, they have something posted about it. You can read about it. And I try to match up the version of Odin compared to the file I'm trying to help people flash. Generally, it works, but in a lot of cases, people have to move to a different version of Odin. And it may be because you're running for, say, Windows XP versus Vista versus Windows 7. Uh, so basically, that may be an issue you're running Okay, into. we're going to cover uh, .tar or dot tar.md5 files. Basically the .tar file um, with the extension .md5 is the same file as the .tar file except for the .md5 extension uh, tells it when it goes into Odin to scan for compatibility when you initiate the install process. It doesn't change anything else. Um, an issue related to these is that people will download them. Um, they'll download these files and they'll come corrupted. It just happens. It's a slow download because developers out there are kind enough to host these on their servers for free or through sites like Mega Upload and host them for free. If you pay to be a member of those sites, you'll get the files much faster because they are small files and generally most people's connections can download them almost instantaneously or within a few minutes. However, these will drag out for four and five hours sometimes, uh, again, because they're free and they're trying to spread out the bandwidth and stuff of that nature. Uh, because they're not making any money off of that. Another is, is the battery. The battery on the Droid Charge generally needs to be reinserted into the back of the phone right before you hit start on Odin. So it, it is dependent on what you're trying to flash based on what the developer wanted and what they recommend using. But generally speaking, you'll set everything up, have Odin all prepared, have your phone in download mode plugged in like you see in my videos and then right before you hit start you'll just simply place the battery into the back of the phone don't change anything else anywhere else and then just hit start that generally resolves a lot of the issues but sometimes in some versions I found that removing the battery and keeping it out for the duration of the install actually causes it to work. The original USB cable and the actual USB port that you're using are considerations uh, the original USB cable is generally necessary on most phones we're finding out, but you can get away with higher quality USB cables. You can try things out, see what other people have had success with. I've used other USB cables just fine, whereas I've read about and talked to people about them running into problems with theirs, and they have to use the original one that came with the phone. Um, regarding the USB port you're using, especially on desktops, but it can be related to on laptops, but generally not as much of an issue. The USB ports are not all connected to the motherboard. They're not all built into the motherboard. And a lot of the problems people have is when they use a like a USB splitter where it just plugs into a single USB port that's not connected to the motherboard. 
Um, you have USB, you have extra USB ports that are built in, um, but they're not physically a part of the motherboard. They're just an addition to it. Um, that can run into problems. So try to make sure you're using a USB port that's connected to the motherboard itself. Okay, rooting in general with older versions of ROMs, of whatever it is you're trying to flash. Uh, progressively, I've tried to keep the videos up to date. There's actually a more up to date rooting video, or excuse me, there's a more up to date rooting version available that I haven't published yet in a video form because I've been running tests on it and having a lot of problems. So I didn't want to provide that as an option yet. Uh, until I successfully mitigate all those for you guys so it makes it a little easier on you. Uh, but basically what happens is, is that over time the software itself as you've seen with Froyo versus Gingerbread versus now Ice Cream Sandwich progressively has been updated over time and the developers who are working on this phone regardless if you use the Infinity ROM, the Humble ROM, uh, Gummy Charge, they were updating the their ROMs to match the latest and greatest for antenna software, uh, communications to the cell phone tower, and a bunch of other little pieces that a lot of us generally take for granted. But they were progressively making these better along with improving the response and the performance of their individual ROMs and uh, making things run smoother overall and just improving different features. Well, what has happened over time is, is that we're still using some of these older versions to flash ROMs. Uh, for example, my most popular video, uh, it, it in and of itself is a, a very dated rooting process, but because it's so popular, it continually pops up at the top. I don't want to remove it because it's still good and it still works, but the state that it leaves your phone in is very dated. That's not really a problem if you're going to move on to other ROMs. If you're going to move on to other customization, things like that, progressively you'll get updated. The idea being it just gives you root, and then from there you can update the phone and everything else will progressively move along with it. Uh, another way to do it is to basically use the latest uh, gingerbread based rooting, and then you'll be most current. But again, if you go backwards then and try older ROMs, you're going to be resetting all of your efforts there at that point. Um, things to consider. Also regarding the uh, rooting uh, and using ROMs, as everybody's kind of noticed, a lot of the most excellent developers that basically did everything that we saw for free have moved on to the Nexus telephone now that it's out. It probably will be the latest and greatest for some time with the most support because of the fact that it's not uh, been ruined essentially by Verizon and all these custom overlay operating systems. and it, It's a straight Google phone. So it's an option to consider when your uh, contract comes up. Okay, another piece that a lot of people have is regardless of what ROM they're running, what custom routing they've done, what applications, even what software, they'll install ROM Manager. ROM Manager does not work on the Droid Charge. ROM Manager will break everything. Uh, do not use it. Do not have it installed. Um, it has duplicate services that you can use with Clockwork Mod, you know, for backing up, changing around ROMs, things of that nature. You can do that with Clockwork Mod in the background. Don't use ROM Manager. Don't have it installed. That's a real common problem. Okay, the next piece is, is that I've gotten a lot of questions where people ask, Hey, I just did all this and my phone looks exactly the same. Well, if you're flashing the stock gingerbread version, it's going to look the same as your phone did just a few minutes earlier. So basically what you're going to do from there is, is you're going to download Super User if it's not already installed on there. That will give the phone access to all those file systems that you need to run root based apps. And then when you run a root only app like Titanium Backup, you need to click on Super User as it asks and say yes, you have permission to run this. Um, that will basically clean up any problems that you had related to not being able to run a root app even though you believe your phone is rooted. It includes wireless tether, whatever else you may choose to run. And sometimes you need BusyBox. You can go ahead and do a little research on that. If it's not already built into your phone, sometimes it asks for that. Okay, another thing that I get asked a lot is what does deep loaded mean? Um, if you're flashing a ROM that has been deep loaded, basically all of the crapware from Verizon that's forced onto your phone that can't be removed is removed. Basically, if you flash this ROM, it'll be missing all of those pieces and potentially not able to have those pieces added back in unless you go to a different ROM. It depends on how the developer did it. 
But basically, all that annoying crap from Verizon is gone. Okay, another question I get all the time is, uh, my phone is showing a little computer and a explanation point, and there's nothing there, and when I turn it on, that's all I get. Um, it's a real common thing, and basically, it, it's not anything to worry about. People freak out. They say my phone is bricked. Bricked means that your phone is dead forever, not usable again. That is not the case when you're at this state. In fact, all you've done is erased everything that was on your phone, not on the SD card, but on the phone itself, and left it blank. So it's just like having a computer without an operating system. It's in a brand new state. It's ready to accept whatever operating system you want to give it. What happened was, is you flashed via Odin your new operating system. As you flashed it, it successfully listened to its instructions, erased your phone, and set it up to install the new operating system. The problem you ran into is that the new operating system was either corrupted because it came in a bad download, the version of Odin you're running isn't working with it, some of those other past things that we discussed might be affecting it. It successfully erased your phone and can't load the new operating system. So you just have a brand new phone waiting for an operating system. What you should do at that point is go through all those troubleshooting pieces we just talked about until you find the error and then you'll be good to go. It's a touchy little thing and trial and error is your best. Uh, your, your best way to fix things. That's what I do with people on the message board or in private messaging. I just sit here and give them suggestions until one of those things takes. It's one of those little things and it's hard for me to do when I'm not actually seeing it. Anyways, thanks again. Let me know what you think. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, that helps motivate me to keep making more videos. I'm going to start doing uh, some of my favorite app reviews as well so that maybe you can find uh, a couple things that you might like that you're maybe missing right now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bak 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 b